Hi, I'm Doug Young, and what you just heard was a comparison of using Tone Dexter 2 uh, from Audio Sprockets versus the direct sound of my pickup. Uh, if you're not familiar with Tone Dexter, let me explain real quickly what it does. Tone Dexter's goal is to make your guitar pickup sound more like your guitar does through a microphone. And uh, to achieve this, you train Tone Dexter on how your guitar sounds. You plug in a mic, you plug in your guitar, you play for a few seconds, and Tone Dexter learns the difference between the sound of the mic and the sound of your pickup. And it creates a filter, which Audio Sprockets calls a wave map. And that filter alters your pickup to make it sound more like the microphone. This is the key feature of Tone Dexter, but Tone Dexter also serves as a full feature guitar preamp, DI, with all the features you'd expect, a, a DI out, mute, boost, tune, EQ, so on and so forth. Now, there are already a lot of videos out there that demonstrate the training process that I just described, including one that I made for the original Tone Dexter, which is still valid. Uh, what I want to show you in this video are just a few of the new features of Tone Dexter 2, and I'm going to focus on the new tools for modifying the basic wave map, something you couldn't really do very well in Tone Dexter 1, but the Tone Dexter 2 supports extensively. So I've already trained Tone Dexter on this guitar, on this pickup, which is a Barbera saddle bass pickup. Uh, you've already heard the basic results, the default settings of the wave map that I created for this guitar. Uh, Tone Dexter, of course, can work with virtually any pickup, and to some degree, the worse your raw pickup sounds, the more impressive the transformation Tone Dexter makes will be. Uh, one thing that some people have struggled with um, is that the sound that they get at home or when recorded direct, like I'm doing here, doesn't always work as well on a gig through a loud sound system with a band. And that's where Tone Dexter 2's ability to fine tune the results really come in handy. So let's start with the existing wave map that I've got here and uh, let's look at what we have to work with. The first control I usually start with in adjusting the sound is something called spaciousness. And that is this control right here. And by the way, you notice that Tone Dexter 2 has a really nice full color display with uh, lots of options and uh, lots of feedback on what you're doing. Uh, spaciousness is kind of what it sounds like. It's how much of the ambience and the spaciousness of the microphone is built into the sound. And it defaults to 100%, which should match pretty much what the microphone heard. And that's what we just used. Uh, but I can, I can crank that up. I can go even more spacious. And you may notice the uh, waveform changing a little bit as I do that. So here's 200% spaciousness. For live gigs, what I usually want to do is reduce the spaciousness. I want a little more direct sound without as much air. We could go as low as zero, and you can really see the waveform change now. It's basically changing the impulse response that underlies the sound here. So this is zero spaciousness, still going to be affecting the sound, but without the extra spaciousness that's added by the microphone. For now, I'm going to settle on something like about 70% spaciousness. Just reduced a little bit, be a little less lively, a little more, more appropriate for playing through a, uh, a louder sound system, a PA system, or an, or an amplifier. Now, the next control that I can mess around with that is effective is the anti-feedback control. Uh, anti-feedback, of course, uh, does what it says. It's going to—it's about reducing feedback, and you might think you don't want to engage it unless you're having feedback. But actually, what it does is a little more interesting than that. Take a look at this waveform that we're now seeing. That is the EQ curve that's being applied to the guitar to correct it to sound more like the microphone, and you can see a big uh, bump around the low mids. That's the the body resonance of the guitar, and the anti-feedback control knows about that and starts reducing it as I turn it up. I can go all the way up to a 200% reduction, in which case you now see that that low mid-range hump has been completely removed. Let's hear how that sounds. This is going to sound pretty flat. So you can certainly use this control to fight feedback, especially when you're playing through a louder sound system. But what I'm going to do is use it more as a tone control and just say, I don't want quite as much of a full body sound typically when I'm playing live. So I'm going to put the anti-feedback at about 40%. Take a look at what that does. I go from zero to 40. I'm just reducing a little bit of the resonance of the guitar. 
We also do have a notch filter, a traditional feedback tool for notching out a particular frequency if you do get feedback. The next thing up I'm gonna look at is EQ. And right here on the panel, we've got access to low, mid, and high, and that's good for quickly grabbing and doing some EQ uh, while you're on a gig. However, if I push this control, I get access to much more detail. And actually what we've got is three fully parametric EQ bands, plus a high pass filter. Uh, so this is a pretty just typical thing I would always do, roll off a little low end with a high pass filter. There's nothing much coming out of the guitar below, you know, I don't know, 50, 60, even 70 or 80. Let's put it on 60 hertz. Uh, I think for purposes of demonstration here, I'm going to boost the bass a little bit. Now you notice, see I'm boosting, I can boost up to uh, 12 dB, quite a bit, and I can change the frequency at which I'm boosting, and I can control the width of the boost. So for our purposes here, let me just boost a little bit of the low end, just a couple dB. We'd have to uh, see how that actually sounds through a sound system in practice. I can then go to the middle band, uh, let, and again, I've got the same thing. I've got the ability to boost or cut, a width, and the frequency involved. I'm gonna cut just a couple dB here. And this is affecting the wave map. So let's take a look at the high. By the way, on both the high and the low EQ, we have a choice of, of a band EQ or a shelf EQ. And so I can boost some highs and I can control what frequency that takes effect at. I'm just going to boost uh, 1 dB or so. So now we've got a little bit of an EQ applied to the wave map. And this can be whatever you want. What I would suggest is that you uh, put a looper in front of Tone Dexter play something, listen back while you're making these changes, and actually listen through whatever sound system you're really gonna use. You can create uh, settings for your own PA system, for your own guitar amp, and tweak an EQ until it sounds good. Uh, now that I've got the EQ done, there's something else we can do. Uh, I actually can blend in some of the dry pickup sound uh, and it, with this dry blend control. And one of the first things I might do is go to 100% blend, at which point, we're back to the raw pickup sound, basically. And we also have a dry EQ. So I can apply a, uh, a high pass filter to that. I'm gonna roll off some of the direct sound a little bit. And I could go through an EQ and try to make my direct sound be as good as I, as I can. I'm gonna leave it alone for now. But then we can adjust the blend. Anything from 100% wave map to 100% dry. So I'm gonna go with about a 25% blend. And what this will do is when I'm playing live, it'll just give me a little more punch, a little more of the, the raw pickup sound, a little less of the uh, spacious sound of the microphone. So as you can see, we can kind of extensively modify the wave map to uh, create whatever kind of sound we want. Let's listen to this final result and uh, compare it to the original dry sound. So that's just a quick look at how we can enhance and alter the basic sound of the wave map in Tone Dexter 2. There are a lot more features in Tone Dexter 2 that I don't have time to go through in this video. Uh, it supports multiple inputs, uh, dual sources, supports internal mic, it supports blending your sound with an external mic, it uh, has various routing options for output, uh, stereo effects loops, mono and stereo out, and so there's a lot more to explore. Uh, you might check out the manual on the Audio Sprockets website. Thanks for watching.